Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, June 15th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida, and again virtually teaching this week in Paris, France. Apple today released iOS 12.5.4. The most recent version of iOS, of course, is iOS 14.6. However, some older devices going back to the iPhone 5 and iPhone 6 are not supporting newer iOS versions. And that's why Apple is still releasing security updates for iOS 12. This particular update fixes three vulnerabilities. One is a vulnerability in how certificates are parsed and it may lead to arbitrary code execution. And then we have two WebKit vulnerabilities that also may lead to memory corruption or code execution. And apparently these vulnerabilities are already actively being exploited. So if you're still running one of these older devices, make sure you update. And apparently NIST.gov, the National Institute for Standard and Technologies domain, suffered an outage earlier today. I was able to see this myself early this morning and there were a couple of reports on Twitter as well as on the outages mailing list. One of the effects was that the website, of course, that serves many security standards and such was not reachable. Also affected was apparently the NIST time service because some of the host names of these NIST time servers were not resolvable and some organizations are using them as their time standards. For less critical NTP services, of course, you may want to just sync with pool.ntp.org or run your own little NTP server that is synchronized, for example, via GPS. It's not quite clear what the root cause of the outage was, but apparently it was DNS related, of course, and it may have been caused by a denial of service attack, but I couldn't find any official confirmation of that. Rapid7 today published a blog post with details regarding four different vulnerabilities in the Acadian Provisioning Manager. These vulnerabilities, if chained together, can be used to achieve a complete compromise of the system. And well, Acadian Provisioning Manager is a solution for Cisco's unified communications environment. So if you are a Cisco unified communications customer, maybe you are are also using Acadian Provisioning Manager. Sadly, no patches are available for any of the vulnerabilities. One vulnerability was an actually relatively easy guessable uh, static password that's included uh, with these appliances. It's also uh, pretty easy to break out of a restricted environment via VI, which is actually a very common issue that you are just executing commands via VI. And uh, then you have additional sensitive information exposed in part also because development files apparently were left behind on the the device. So for example, it looks like an entire Git repository for the code was included uh, in the actual production environment. Rapid7 made four attempts to reach out to Acadian starting back in January, but uh, never really uh, got a response. So that's why they now went ahead and did the public uh, disclosure. If you do run this software as there is no patch available and given the overall all apparent lack of uh, code quality here, you're probably best off by not exposing it to any outside uh, networks. And Microsoft has an interesting blog post as part of its uh, security or Microsoft Threat Intelligence Center with uh, details regarding a recent phishing attack that uh, did a 
lead to business email compromise and apparently bypassed some multi-factor authentication. The root problem here as far as the multi-factor authentication goes is legacy protocols that may have been enabled like IMAP and POP3. You don't need those protocols against Exchange Online if you do have a client and most mail clients do support it where uh, you're able uh, to directly talk to Exchange. But if you do still have IMAP and POP3 enabled in Exchange Online, then uh, these services will not ask for the second factor and uh, you would be able to directly connect using just the username and password. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.